Well guys, it's been a long two weeks without making a video to be completely honest. But I gotta say, I am very glad to be back at it again. Hello everybody, I'm Extra Years of Zest and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Lego Mandalorian Razor Crest, and I'm super excited to be talking all about it uh, to you guys today. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get into the video. Okay, so before we actually begin today's video, I just want to say how sorry I am for not making any videos recently just because school started back up and it's been absolutely insane with the amount of work that we've been getting. Um, and besides that, I've actually been busy uh, paint, repainting my room um, just to touch it up a little bit and stuff. Um, and I've got new LED lights and stuff. Uh, yeah, just lots of new fun stuff that I've been busy with. So yeah, once again, I'm super sorry with, for not making uh, any new videos, but I can assure you that we are still back at it in the game. I have a lot of new fun ideas for you guys. And of course, what I love is when people recommend stuff in the comments section, which by the way, uh, we should be making a new back to school EDC video here pretty soon now that I'm actually going back to school myself. I think it'd be kind of nice um, sometime next week if I would actually be able to figure out what I take to school because you know it's been a long time with quarantine and stuff so anyways besides that I just wanted to thank everybody who's currently subscribed to the channel and if you're not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing you really help me out um, all you gotta do is hit that red subscribe button down below and it's as simple as that um, and if you do subscribe now, we are actually doing a free custom hoodie giveaway, which will be ending on October 8th. Um, and the goal here is to eventually reach 200 subscribers before uh, the end of 2020. So if we can get as much help with that as possible, I'd really appreciate it. Now let's actually get into the review. So right now, I don't really have the box with me because I don't really feel like there's any point of reviewing what's on the outside of the box when you've got all the stuff that you need with the actual set. <laughs> that, that's kind of the different part with Nerf guns though because you know, sometimes you don't know all the features of it. But anyways, once you're actually building the Lego set yourself, you're actually able to find out everything you need to with how stuff is supposed to function so anyways this is the lego mandalorian razor crest and i gotta say it looks pretty dang cool just like the tv show and i personally love the tv show so that is one of the biggest reasons why i bought this now if you're wanting to know the details on this thing it's 130 dollars on amazon and i believe it's actually an amazon exclusive which was kind of interesting to me but you know, I guess big companies like that can do whatever they want with whatever. So uh, <laughs> that, that's basically it. $130 um, and it comes with 1,023 pieces, I believe, um, is what it says on the box. And we'll go over the features here in just a second, but I just want to cover all the details as much as possible before we get too into detail. <laughs> so. Anyways, um, it, as for all the details and stuff on the outside, it looks pretty dang good other than a couple of things, um, which I'll get to later. Um, 
So we actually have the ship here and it comes with, I guess, five mini figures. So of course we get our Mandalorian, except he's not in the Beskar armor. And you know, I'm kind of sad about that. It's the full silver armor if you don't know what the Beskar armor is. And I was really kind of sad that we got the basic Mandalorian figure that we've had for the other Mandalorian sets um, that they've released previously. We have Grief Karga, who is the guy who basically is like the taskmaster, the taskmaster, gosh, I can't speak, who basically uh, hires the Mandalorian to like go out and do these jobs, basically. Um, aside from that, we also have an Imperial Scout Trooper, and I gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite figures actually in all of this, just because he looks so dang cool. I also forgot to mention that Grief Karga is actually exclusive to this set, as of right now, they may release stuff um, a little bit later in the future where he's in more of sets, but if you want a Grief Karga figure, you're gonna have to buy the Razor Crest, and you know, I, I recommend buying the Razor Crest just for itself. Um, and then our next figure that we have here is IG-11, um, and you know, he has like this backpack, so, well not really a backpack, he has a little clip here on the back, um, and you know, it's just the it's just the basic droid design that they've had for years now, and honestly, I kind of wish that they expanded a little bit more on his movements and stuff, because you know, if you've seen the show, IG-11 just goes ham on everybody. And last but not least, our final <laughs> our final mini 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 figure we have here is Baby Yoda, and my oh my, does he look so cute! So yeah, that's basically what we get here in the box. I'll go over the details here in just a second of, um, you know, what I would change with some things and, uh, you know, what I'm very grateful for. So let's get into that. Alrighty, so what are the things that I would change and not change with this? Well, I think before we actually go into that, I would like to show you the different details and stuff that actually come within the Mandalorian set. So I'm gonna move my figures here. I'll talk about the figures here in just a second. So basically what you're getting with this entire package is of course the Razor Crest itself, and then it comes with multiple features. So you have the guns on the outside, you have the cockpit, um, and interestingly enough, you actually have a little escape pod here on the top, which is kind of a fun feature I think they added. Um, so there's lots and lots of panels here on the bottom. I'll get to that in a second. But one of the most interesting things that I think they did for the cockpit was actually how, I'm not sure if you can see that right there. Um, there's like a little thing that you can just grab onto here and you pull out the cockpit. So you're able to have access to uh, two chairs in here. Um, so of course, if you want to put your own baby Yoda in there and stuff and <laughs> you know you can you can reenact all the stuff in the cockpit um and I really gotta say it I like this idea instead of like the at least from what I've grown up with a lot of the Lego Star Wars ships have this this thing where it's basically like a fold out option but that wouldn't necessarily make sense with this just because you know, as far as I know, that this ship doesn't do that. So yeah, anyways, once you open up that cockpit, you also have access back here. You can flip up this hatch and there's actually um, a little bit of space for weapons and stuff. So if you want to, you can put, um, with those two clips in there, you can put two weapons inside of there. So yeah, that's what we get for the cockpit. We got two chairs in there. So, you know, that's pretty dang cool. As for the escape pod out here on the top, it basically has this little panel that you can take off and you can fit an entire minifigure in there. And here, let me just grab one of them. I should grab a brief cargo here. So you can fit your minifigure in there, like so. And then once you do that, you can see his face in there. So that's kind of fun. Um, I, I like that they added a little, um, escape pod with this. I didn't, 
As far as I remember from the show, they didn't have an escape pod. I'm not entirely sure I could be completely wrong on that, so don't take my word for it. Anyways, aside from that, let's get to the more interesting parts of this. So I really like how they use all of the space here on the bottom. So right here, when you flip down this panel, you get full access to the Mandalorian's bed, basically. So that's where ba Baby Yoda hangs out for most of the time. And then it's cool because you can flip down all these different panels and stuff right here. So we have two of these um, on this. So there's one of these panels on the other side. And then we have uh, two of these huge panels on the side as well. Um, and so when you flip down these panels on this side, you actually get access to the carbonite bricks that um, you see at episode one, I believe, of The Mandalorian. So that's kind of cool. They both have their own different printing. And of course, I would have thought that they would have done something kind of like more the Han Solo carbonite piece where you can actually fit a minifigure inside. But due to limited space and stuff inside of this, I don't think they would have been able to pull that off necessarily just because they were staying within a price range. Um, we also have an access hatch back here, so you can flip that up and down. And then, like I said earlier, we have two more of these flaps on this side, and that doesn't really give you access to anything. Um, but something I really like about this, of course, is that there's so much space on the bottom that you can fit lots of different types of cargo inside of here. So, um, as well as minifigures. So that's really, really fun. Um, and then finally on this hatch right here, we have um, storage for the, uh, <laughs> the spring loaded missiles here on the top, which I'll get to in just a second. So yeah, that's basically what we got on the inside. On the outside, one thing I forgot to talk talk about, like I just said earlier, was the spring loader missiles. So there's two of them right here. You just press down uh, these grill pieces and they will shoot out. So that's really, really fun. Um, as for the overall detail I feel on this, I think it's pretty dang cool. Um, as for other reviews that I've seen before, I've noticed that they talked a lot about how awkward this looks. Um, using it like a barrel piece for the back part of the huge engines and they say it's disproportionate to the entire thing and well that's kind of true looking at some of the pictures and stuff you know it kind of looks like that so i overall think lego did a very very good job with designing this entire thing it's a very sturdy ship if you're wondering the overall um support beams and stuff on the side that you can see here it holds it together very very nicely so i gotta give lego hands for that um and then we got some landing gear here on the bottom and if you've seen pictures before the back landing gear comes out a little bit more than that so you know lego did what they did and overall it's not my biggest gripe about this entire set um, and my biggest gripe actually lies within the minifigures themselves. So, you know, $130, you'd expect to get something a little bit more premium. Um, so for like the $130, I believe at the time, uh, a couple years ago, they came out with a Slave One, um, which was about the same price and it had 1,007 pieces. So it may have been even cheaper than that. I'm not entirely sure. But the fact that this set is both $130 and an Amazon exclusive, it doesn't quite make sense to me why they didn't put a little bit more effort into the minifigures. But, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful for what we get here. We don't really see a whole lot of these other detailed um, ships like from Star Wars. They usually do a whole lot of reruns and they, you know, do minor things and stuff. So. Honestly, it, it's okay for, for the most part in value. Um, as for the minifigures, I really feel like the Scout Trooper and Grief Karga, they're really, really good. Grief Karga could have used like something for a little cape on the back, but you know, <laughs> that's not my biggest gripe. The Scout Trooper looks so dang cool. Arm printing would have definitely made it even better, but Overall, I really like what they did for this, especially seeing what they did for the old designs. But really my gripe lies within the Mandalorian himself. I really was hoping that we would get something 
with the Beskar armor and stuff, and possibly even the jetpack that he gets at the very end. But you know, it's, it is what it is. And like I said earlier, I'm grateful for what we get. Also, one thing I kind of wish that they had inside the Razor Crest was his whole uh, weapons tray that he has, um, which you see in several of the scenes, which that would have been super cool, but I, I don't know, it would have kind of compromised the usage of space in the bottom here. Um, and then my other gripe with minifigures, of course, is the IG-11. Um, and you know, I really just wish that LEGO would move away from the, the simple droid design where all you can do is really move their arms and legs um, that way. And really, there's not a whole lot you can do with this guy. Um, so I'm actually going to be uh, showing you guys here in just a second how I actually kind of improved my IG-11 a little bit just to give him some more, oop, just to give him some more functionality and stuff. And you know, if that would've been cooler. Um, and then finally, I actually think the, <laughs> the little baby Yoda is so dang cute. I, I really think they did a fantastic job with this. And honestly, I gotta say, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be just because, I don't know, I've, I've never used like a little Lego baby before. I've never seen one before, but you know, they exist, but I've never seen one before. So yeah, honestly, I gotta say Baby Yoda is probably one of my favorite parts about this entire set. Um, and as far as I know, Baby Yoda doesn't come in any of the other Lego Mandalorian sets. So yeah, aside from that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I would go, how I would personally upgrade my IG-11 here. So I actually have um, a built uh, assassin droid over here with the same technique. So basically all you're gonna need for this IG-11 upgrade is IG-11's head, his weapons, and then whatever clip he needs on the back. Some droid legs, which if you want to, you can use them from uh, the, uh, the, the set that actually comes with. This piece, which actually came from the 2010 uh, General Grievous Starfighter, um, and that was the drawer that came with it. Two of, I call them robot, robot hands. Two of these little gray robot hands. Um, I prefer gray myself. Sometimes I can only find black. And then two more of these Lego elements. I'm not entirely sure what they are called. But, you know, I wish I could have found these in gray, but I can't. I don't know why. So yeah, anyways, all you gotta do to build this, it's super duper simple. You have to attach um, the body to the legs here. And so you gotta make sure that it's facing the right way. You want this stud here to be on the back. You just put IG-11's head here on the top and that just gives him the full motion of looking around like this. As far as I know in the movie, he doesn't really look down or up or down a whole lot. Um, uh, you know, I, I can be wrong here. Um, and then all we have to do here is to assemble the arms. So you just stick these gray robot arm pieces inside of these black ones, or if you can find gray ones, those would work better. And then you just stick the arms on with the black pieces going on first. I forgot to assemble that other arm. And then all you, all you need to do is put his blaster on his back and then put his other blaster in his hand. And now you get a full range of motion with how he can angle his hand. Um, and honestly, it kind of works a little bit better if you want to twist his uh, head around without popping it off like on the regular droid. Um, so yeah, I, I think just those simple improvements could definitely have been, it definitely could have improved the set a little bit better. As for the Mandalorian, I really wish it came with his Beskar armor, but what I did just to make him a little bit better was I got uh, a jetpack here, which I actually took off a Death Watch Trooper from some Lego set from 2013, it came with Darth Maul and then two of the red Death Watch Troopers, whoops. And then now you have 
uh, his jetpack there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and then for his blaster, I noticed that they didn't come with any other blasters for him other than his really cool sniper. Um, I went ahead and got one of the Lego revolvers and I really think it works pretty dang good for him. So yeah, those are the minor improvements that I would actually put inside of this. Now, finally, let's talk about the value here. For $130 and it being an Amazon exclusive, I'm really conflicted about the value actually. I remember growing up a whole lot where a $10 Lego set would come with a hundred or so pieces. And you, you know, that, that kind of remained the standard in my head. So for $130 for the ship itself, you know, <laughs> the ship is absolutely awesome. There's a couple of things that I wish they added, but overall, I'm very grateful for what we got in this. 1,023 pieces. Again, I may be kind of wrong on that. That's just what I remember for the most part. You're losing about 300 or so pieces here in this set. And so what I kind of wish that they did was added something a little bit more on the side, perhaps um, uh, maybe like Queel. Uh, I don't know if you've, if you've seen uh, the TV show, Queel is uh, the little guy who actually repairs IG-11, sorry for the spoiler. Um, and he rides like these little dinosaur looking things. I would, <laughs> I thought uh, something like that would actually kind of make this a little bit more fun. Um, or even something like a speeder for uh, the scout trooper. That would have made this so cool. Um, but you know, just for as little pieces as it comes with, for how much it should cost. Of course, with Lego, you're getting the premium stuff. You can't, you can't beat Lego. Of course, um, they make all sorts of different prototypes here on the side. And um, back when I did the Lego Chinese set, um, it, like it was a, a kind of a knockoff. It was a Lepin one, which I got from some Chinese site. A lot of the pieces have already broken at the time, so really, you're getting the quality of LEGO with this build. Overall, I think it's a pretty dang good build. It's lots of fun. And if you're considering buying this yourself, I would recommend it if you're willing to put in $130 to buy this. Um, but you know, if you just want Baby Yoda, you can finally, you could probably find him somewhere online. <laughs> um, but yeah, $130, I, I myself am still a little bit conflicted on that price, but you know, overall, I think the ship is really, really cool. The figures are somewhat mediocre. They're, some of them were cool. Some of them could have used some improvement. Um, and the features and playability of this overall, I think is what really makes it worth it. Just because, you know, it's the Mandalorian Razor Crest. How cool can you get there? Um, but yeah, other than that, I think um, on the side here, just talking about actually building it, some of the building techniques that they use with this, I think is really fun. It's a bit different from what I grew up with because um, a lot of the features mostly relied on a whole lot more Technic stuff. Of course, holding this all together, we got Technic stuff holding it all together but they definitely used a whole lot more different features and stuff just to keep this whole thing together. Um, and I gotta say they did a very good job of it. So yeah, overall, if you wanna buy this yourself, I recommend it. It's such a fun build. Um, and I actually built this on a camping trip. If you may or may not have saw it. earlier, I went on a camping trip and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it. And it was fun to build. It took me about 45 minutes or so because some of the new uh, techniques that they used were a bit newer to me, because um, I actually haven't built with Lego in a year or so, so this is one of my first Lego sets in quite a while. But yeah, anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review video. Um, and if you liked it, please consider leaving a like down below. Um, and of course, I'm always open to suggestions for whether it's a new video idea or some kind of constructive criticism. Of course, I'm trying my best here to try to get you as much information as possible. Um, 
while trying to keep it somewhat condensed. Right now as I'm filming this, I'm not exactly sure how long the video is, but I'm hoping that overall you really enjoyed this video, that it was both informative and helpful, if anything. And if you're considering buying this yourself, I really hope you enjoy it um, just as much as I did. Um, but yeah, anyways guys, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Um, and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. Anyways guys, I'll see you sometime, hopefully later next next week or this week um, and uh, with some new videos and stuff and I'll see you guys later.